We're now joined by um, uh, Justin Bell, the commercial manager in Nigeria of Virgin Atlantic Airways, to take a critical look at the impact of COVID-19 on the aviation sector. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's start with talking about the impact COVID-19 has had uh, on the aviation sector generally. How bad has it been? The impact on, on, on the global aviation sector has been quite simply devastating. Um, you know, we're as airlines in the business of moving people around the world and, and when the world effectively shuts down, um, it, it effectively shuts down our, our business. Um, this crisis is unlike any other that we've seen before. Uh, you, you think about other uh, crises that have affected aviation in the past, you think of things like 9-11, the SARS crisis, uh, the ash cloud uh, that affected aviation um, very significantly, but they tended to be regionalized. This uh, crisis, this global pandemic is truly global and it's probably one of the only uh, crises in living memory that has affected everybody around the world. Um, to put that into some sort of context, um, you know, the uh, industry, uh, ICAO and IATA are predicting that av global aviation airlines will lose effectively between 350 billion and 395 billion US dollars in passenger revenue in 2020 alone. That's a lot. So, uh, so, so let's also talk about Virgin Atlantic. How, how have Virgin Atlantic fared um, in this period? Well, we, we've certainly not been immune to this. In fact, it's been a devastating period for us too. And um, yeah, I'd like to share with you sort of a few highlights from this year, you know, that sort of set the tone for where we are now. Um, you know, right from the start, uh, we took some very decisive action back in February, uh, and that was to stop flying into mainland China when the coronavirus was really starting to spread out of China and, and towards Europe. Um, we were one of the first airlines to do that. And at that time, our, our leadership uh, within the business uh, started to take some quite decisive action as we started to see the impact of, of the COVID-19 virus um, on aviation and in particular around how countries were then starting to implement sort of travel restrictions and actually closing down, down borders. Um, so we were forced uh, into making some, some quite big decisions around how our business operates uh, around April time. Uh, the two key ones were around our decision to consolidate our operations in London um, into Heathrow. We, currently, we had previously operated in both Heathrow and Gatwick. We decided to consolidate those. And uh, as we saw the scale of, of the COVID crisis on, on our business, we also then took the decision to retire early some of our aircraft because we could clearly see straight away that our business was going to be much smaller than it had been previously. Um, that was followed by probably one of the toughest pills we've had to, to swallow, which is as we grasped the scale of the problem, we could see that this crisis was going to go on for some time and was significantly going to affect our business. And as we reviewed the size and shape of what our business should look like going forward, um, we had to take a, the tough decision to, uh, to say goodbye to some uh, more than 3,000 of our, our colleagues as we downsized by around 35% at that time. But to sort of put some numbers around that for you as well, you know, in, in quarter two of this year, our passenger uh, revenue dropped by 98%, um, it, off a cliff, literally. And even though as, the, as countries slowly unlock around the world, we look at our, our second half predictions for this year are still in excess of 60% down on, on what we would have seen at the same time last year. So it's, it's been truly a, a difficult time very difficult time uh, and as, as you will have probably seen as well airlines throughout the world have faced uh, a struggle to survive and we've we've been uh, certainly uh, no exception um, we uh, had asked an, initially for the british government to help aviation generally in terms of uh, helping have access to if you like cheap loans to basically keep our businesses afloat yeah. Um, we, we were unsuccessful at that point and our, the Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK advised us that uh, they were, if you like, the point of last resort and that the onus was on us to, to uh, seek other ways of securing our business. And we were delighted actually uh, just a few weeks ago to announce that we had successfully privately 
recapitalized our business um, to the tune of, of, of a package of, of measures that were worth around 1.2 billion pounds, um, which was a mixture of new revenue, new um, investment into the company from the Virgin Group, but also um, investment from a, a, a new investor, along with um, some deferral of some fairly significant costs, which we would have been incurring with aircraft deliveries yeah. and so on. That was, that was exciting for us to announce, but it was also another day of mixed feelings. On the same day, we also had to announce that we were going to say goodbye to another 1,100 members of our, of our Virgin family, um, which now means that Virgin Atlantic is effectively half the size it was at the beginning of this year. You know, we, we started off with 9,000 employees, employees at the beginning of the year, and we're now down to around 4,500 as we well, come so, to well, so It's been really hard um, letting, letting your, your family go. Um, very difficult. Very um, difficult. Um, but I, I want to talk now about um, um, safety um, of flying. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how how safe is it really flying, and what and what measures is Virgin Atlantic putting in place to also protect its uh, um, customers? That's an excellent question, and to be honest with you, it's it's the the, the main question because having set the scene a little bit with just how how difficult it is at the moment for airlines, you know, people um, aren't travelling. And for those that, that do want to travel or need to travel, we need to make sure that they have absolute peace of mind when they travel. So we've been doing uh, a lot of work over the last few months to make sure that our customers, when they travel with us, feel safe when they uh, go throughout the customer journey with us, whether it's on the ground or in the air. Uh, so one of the things we've been doing uh, is almost a bit counterintuitive to us for, for us as an airline, which is to try and come up with a, a customer experience that has less interaction with our people. Yeah. And for us, our, for us, our people are our differentiator. Uh, they, they make the difference uh, between what we do and what others do. That's what we believe. So, so coming up with a service that, that sort of counter to that is quite hard. But we've been looking at different ways in which people can go through, for example, the airport experience, encouraging people to use online check-in, uh, to complete pre-flight pre health questionnaires to make sure they're actually ready to travel. And when you get to the airport itself, ensuring that there is social distancing in place in, in check-in areas. We're fortunate in Lagos, for example, where we operate in the morning and the airport is generally very quiet. It's easy for us to do that. It's great. Yeah. So customers can, can go through that airport experience with, with ease and peace of mind that they'll be safe. Um, but I guess just as important, and even not more importantly, is what are we doing in the air? Because ultimately, people uh, are concerned that when they're on an aeroplane, that they may not be safe. And, and you know, I can absolutely assure you that it's, it's absolutely safe. We've put so many measures in, um, and to mention just a few. So. Um, obviously, our aircraft have uh, a HEPA filter system on board, which circulates the air in the cabin with the outside air every two to three minutes. So the air is probably better than the air we breathe um, walking down the street. Um, but so it's, it's extremely safe uh, in that respect. And the other thing that we're doing, which is new, um, is we, we call it fogging. Um, but it's actually a, a way in which we can disinfect the aircraft before it goes into service. So before every single flight, irrespective of where you're flying from with yeah. Virgin, the aircraft is fogged with a disinfectant. So when our customers and crew get on board, it's absolutely uh, clean and disinfected and people will feel safe. Yeah. But it, it, it doesn't stop there. Our crew um, obviously are, are kitted out with, with all of the appropriate PPE that they need. And our, our customers are too, because we give our customers a hygiene pack, uh, which includes a face mask, uh, hand sanitizer, and wipes for them to use during the flight. Yeah. Um, and we ask them to wear masks during the flight as well, and obviously just remove them when they're eating. Um, because we also had to design, redesign, if you like, uh, our service on board around food and drink to make sure customers still get what they expect from us, which is great service, but having it delivered in a COVID safe yeah. way. Um, and the, the great news for us is, you know, we've been operating now out of Lagos for the last uh, couple of weeks and the feedback we're getting from customers is phenomenal um, in terms of, you know, the most important thing for them now is feeling safe and having yeah. peace of mind on board. And that's coming through very, very strongly. And, and so, uh, you know, we've succeeded in doing that. Okay. Um, uh, there's obviously new trends, um, you know, in, in you know, um, your sector and, and um, hopefully you know, they will be maintained. Um, it, it obviously it's going to also bring a you know totally different idea with um, what flying is all about. Um, but I also want to talk about testing before flying. Uh, do you do you think that you know is necessary? 
I think right now it probably is necessary, dip, um, but obviously the requirements differ dip, uh, depending on where you're flying to. Yeah. Um, so there's two sides of this that are really important for us. So in, in the UK, we're lobbying hard for uh, the quarantine period to be reduced by using testing to bring it down. At the moment, it's 14 days. So you, you don't require to have a test to go into the UK from Nigeria, um, but you do have to quarantine for two weeks. Yeah. Um, that quarantine period is, is a fundamental challenge for us because it's putting off a lot of people from traveling. It certainly makes business travel impossible. Um, and even for those people who just want to go on a short stay to visit friends and family, they're put off by a two week quarantine period. So we're working uh, hard, very hard in the UK to try and get that quarantine period reduced. And it's likely to be through testing um, if it happens. Um, on the flip side of that, so Nigeria actually has a scheme that probably works closer to the one we're, we'd like to see because, as you, as you probably know, you have a test before you leave the UK and then you'll have a test seven days after you arrive into Nigeria, but that means effectively your quarantine period is, is halved. Yeah. Uh, and a seven-day quarantine is far better than 14 and would at least help stimulate some demand in air travel because right now it's the biggest, biggest challenge airlines are facing is around uh, travel restrictions, quarantine and testing. And, and these are going to continue to be issues for the aviation sector for a long time? I think so, for the foreseeable, uh, absolutely. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's lots of medical experts who've got lots of views on how we could potentially use testing to reduce that quarantine period. And there's uh, far better qualified people than me to probably comment on that. But uh, the fact of the matter is, that as from an aviation perspective, from a Virgin Atlantic perspective, if we're going to start stimulating travel demand and if we're going to get people back flying in the air again, not only has it got to be a safe experience on board, it's, it, we've got to somehow deal with the quarantine period and the testing. Okay. Are you generally comfortable with the measures put in place by um, international, um, 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 by governments generally, as we of course expect international flights to fully resume? Um, are, you, are you comfortable with it? Yes, I mean, we, 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 we totally understand as well, globally, um, everybody's working their way through a completely unprecedented situation. We are, and governments are too, and, and, and every government has a different way of, of looking at it and a different way of, of uh, imposing their travel restrictions and their quarantine periods. And we're happy to work with, with all of the relevant authorities to make sure that, that we're complying fully with, with what's happening in the country. And that's been absolutely the case here. We've been uh, very involved with the Presidential Task Force, the NCAA, the Ministry of Aviation uh, here in Lagos to uh, make sure that we're fully complying with the re requirements that they have, but also having the opportunity to share with them our, our, our sort of views on how things could be done better. Because the one uh, thing that we really would like uh, the, the uh, Ministry of Aviation and the task force to look at in Nigeria is how we can increase the number of customers that we can carry into the country. As, as I'm sure you know, so all international airlines that are operating at the moment have a restriction of a maximum of 200 yeah. uh, passengers coming into the country. And we're delighted that we're at least able to do that. But we know there is demand for more, especially for people coming into Nigeria. And we are currently uh, permitted to operate three flights a week. And those flights coming in from London are, are performing well um, based on the 200 maximum. We'd like to carry more. And we'd like to get back to a daily operation. We were flying a daily flight into Lagos up until uh, March. We'd like to be doing that again as soon as possible. Um, but we obviously realise we have to work with the authorities here to make that happen in a safe way that works for us and obviously the, the, the government too. Okay, and of course, um, what should uh, customers also expect from Virgin Atlantic um, as, of course, um, as you go back into the Nigerian market and get things running again? Well, you know, the, the, the big story that we have actually, we, we had announced earlier on in the year, which we were very, very excited to be able to, to tell uh, our customers that we were bringing the very latest and greatest aircraft that we have in our fleet to, to Lagos. And our plan was to do that this summer anyway. And thankfully, that's one thing that COVID hasn't spoiled. Um, we've returned and as promised, we've bought our A350-1000 aircraft, which is a fantastic aeroplane. Uh, the, the aircraft has been, is a completely relaunched all of our, our, our classes on board. The entertainment system is phenomenal. We have uh, a brand new upper class product 
Um, so that's very exciting. Um, but that aside, um, the other things people can expect from us, uh, first and foremost, and this is something we really hope will encourage people to get back flying, is we've introduced a COVID-19 insurance cover which is absolutely free of charge for all customers traveling on, on any of our flights actually globally. So if you're unfortunate enough to come down with COVID whilst you're traveling and you're flying with us, you are effectively covered. So we, you know, this, this insurance will pick up your medical costs, it will pick up your expenses while you're there, and if, well, you, know, if you really need it, it allow you to be repatriated under this cover, which is great. Um, and the other thing we wanted to do, recognising as well that Nigeria is, is one of the most successful markets for us in terms of our frequent flyer base. We have um, more uh, gold card holders, our most frequent loyal customers in Nigeria than we do in many of our overseas markets. Yeah. Um, and so what we've done for them to try and recognise the fact as well that they haven't been able to travel is we've extended their, their frequent flyer status by a year so they won't lose their gold card or their silver card. And the other thing we're doing, which is a first, um, is we're now offering uh, mileage for redemption flying. So customers who had flown a lot previously and want to use their miles to fly now, you can, but you also get miles for using your miles. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, a, a really great innovation that we're very proud of and hopefully will stimulate some demand. Yeah. What do you think people should or, or customers should um, have in mind as uh, we, we're no longer going back to the way things were, I, I believe. Um, so how do you think you know, customers should be getting ready to deal with the new uh, way of doing things? Yeah, another great question. I mean, the, the, as we touched on earlier, the, the, the new way is very much with a focus on health. Yeah. And uh, as this pandemic evolves around the world in different places and fluctuates, um, people just need to make sure that they're prepared uh, when they travel to, to be able to make sure they're complying with any restrictions they've got. Uh, make sure you're healthy and fit to travel. Uh, that's a big part of it. Now you also see at airports temperature screening going on. So, you know, looking for signs that people perhaps are, are, are suffering. Um, and just getting used to the new way of, of, of uh, of delivering service in a COVID safe way. And, and that's what we're trying to embrace as Virgin Atlantic. Uh, you know, our people are our difference. They, they make the difference to our, at the service we offer. And we're still smiling behind those face masks, even though yeah. you can't see it on board the airplane, but we're delighted to have people on board. And, and we just want people to uh, work with us and, and, uh, and hopefully they'll continue to enjoy the service we offer. Thank you so much, uh, Justin Bell, for speaking with us. It's a um, pleasure. Kudos to, of course, uh, all the you know staff and family of Virgin Atlantic. Um, Thank, you the best. Thank you very much. Thank you.